From the legendary Rose Bowl, consider the number one venue in college sports. Welcome to Pasadena, California, where we've got a good one for you today. It's the SEC versus the Pac-12 as Texas A&M comes into town to take on the UCLA Bruins. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson, along with my partner, Joel Klatt. And welcome to Pasadena on a special Sunday edition of College Football on Fox. Now, this is a rematch of a game that was played last year with Texas A&M, Joel, winning in overtime in College Station. And coming into this game, the big question for head coach Kevin Sumlin, who's going to be his quarterback? Well, we have the answer, but it might not just be one answer. Nick Starkle, the redshirt freshman, is going to start for Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M. But we are Likely to see all three quarterbacks today. Kellen Mond, the true freshman from IMG, and Jake Hubenak, whose spot started last year when Trevor Knight was injured. But it's not who's going to start for me. It's how will they get the ball to this guy, Christian Kirk, one of the premier players in our sport. Christian Kirk is explosive on the outside. They'll hand it to him out of the backfield. Preseason All-American and UCLA will have to account for where number three is on the field at all times. All right, UCLA finished the season four and eight last year, two and seven in the Pac-12, but they played their final six games without their star quarterback, Josh Rosen. Partner, he's back, yep. he's healthy, Bruins are ready to roll. Yeah, and this man, Jim Mora, said to us yesterday, I don't feel a lot of pressure here in Westwood, in large part due to the fact that he's got Josh Rosen back at the quarterback position. This guy is a premier quarterback. He's going to be drafted in the first three picks in the NFL draft come April, but unfinished business here at UCLA. He needs a win to open up the season, to right the wrongs of losing a year ago in this game, and to get the season started on the right foot. Josh Rosen, off-season shoulder surgery. He's healthy. Some consider him maybe the top quarterback pick if he elects to come out of school this year in the NFL. And here come the Bruins. The team's played in Los Angeles the last time in 1950. Five. And don't forget, last year in College Station, UCLA rallied from 15 down in the fourth quarter to force overtime. But the Aggies won it 31 to 24. As we take a look at the weather, it's hot. And it's not just that. Man will kick it off for the Aggies. Darnay Holmes, a deep man. AM, UCLA underway. And this ball kicked out of bounds. And excuse me, we're talking UCLA here. Bola Ola, Ola run for me, the UCLA run game. 127 out of 128 in the FBS a year ago running the football. They were so bad. On the defensive side, Armani Watts, he's the new face of the defense. We've had great faces of the A&M defense. Most notably, one just left, Miles Garrett. Can Armani Watts step up this year? First down and 10 from the 35-yard line for the Bruins. And they give it to Ola run for me. And he goes nowhere. Great defensive Attack a locker with the first tackle of the game. So Josh Rosen, what do you like about his game? Everybody thinks that this kid is special. He's, he's the best pure quarterback that we've got in college football right now. You know, he's, he doesn't necessarily play outside of the structure great, but when he's clean in the pocket, there's no one better. Aggie sacked him five times a year ago. And it's over run for me again, and not very much room over the right side. The Aggie defense stout against the run to start this game. That's something that's got to get established for UCLA. And Jim Mora, the concern was getting into these situations, obvious passing situations. This is when they were unable to protect Josh Rosen a year ago when facing AM. and Third down and nine at the 36. On the run for me. Remains in the backfield. Rosen out of the shotgun. Here's Rosen to throw it for the first time. With time over the middle, and it's caught at the 45. Josh Rosen throwing a strike. Jordan Lastly, the redshirt junior from Compton, California, with the catch. First down, gain of 19. UCLA will execute some fast tempo here. First down, Rosen. Underneath and incomplete. He had a receiver. 
Christian Pepico, and that one thrown a tad bit behind him. And Pepico unable to bring it in. Uh, I think some nerves getting the better of Christian Pepico. The junior from Long Beach, he's a walk-on, has worked immensely hard to get to this point on the field for UCLA. But unable to haul in that first opportunity there. Second down and 10 of the 34. All the run for me, the single setback. Throws it under center. Throws it. Looking. And caught close to a first down once again. This time he finds Caleb Wilson, the redshirt sophomore from Dallas, Texas. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number six. Forcible contact in the knee area. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Donovan Wilson, safety blitz. You see he stumbles, but Rosen in that passing setup, you can't go low at that point. He's delivering the ball, he's set up, and then the dive from Wilson. That's an excellent call by the official. Not always the obvious roughing the passer style of call, which is usually up high towards the head or neck area, but excellent call, and Wilson costing his team now first down inside the 15-yard line for UCLA. Wilson has drawn comparisons to former LSU playmaker Tyran Mato, the Honey Badger. First and 10 at the 12-yard line for the Bruins. Play action. Rosen all day in the end zone incomplete. No flag on the play. Pabico, the intended receiver once again. Rosen has had time to throw, but this is what I love right now. UCLA jumping in and out of tempo here, going fast on this now. Tenth play of the drive. And a quick strike. But AM well prepared. Darren Andrews had no room after he caught the football. And he was gobbled up by Dotson and Caper Smith. Uh, this is when the onus falls directly on the shoulders, or more specifically, the right shoulder of your quarterback. Josh Rosen. Obvious passing situation. Very difficult here as the back of the end zone starts squeezing the defense tighter to the wide receivers. There's just less space to operate with. Third down and 10 at the 12-yard line. Bruins need to go to about the two and a half for first. Rosen in trouble. Throws and incomplete. He's got some backside pressure by Jarrett Johnson, the senior from Katy, Texas. And the Bruins will have to settle for a field goal attempt. And that was one of the questions for Texas A&M was, were they going to be able to generate pass rush without Miles Garrett on the field? Jarrett Johnson, the senior, he's 6'3", 265 pounds, and what a great spin move to the inside. Gets him free, and he disrupts the timing there to force a field goal. So J.J. Molson, who was 12 of 20 last year with a career long of 49, in to attempt the 29 yarder. And the Bruins are on the board. UCLA drives it down the field, settles for three. Leading Texas A&M. Bruins score first to take a three to nothing lead over Texas A&M here in Pasadena. They go 13 plays covering 53 yards and they ate up three minutes and 51 seconds. Christian Kirk. Back deep, and this kid, Kirk, is special. And he won't get an opportunity to return it. So what's the story, Joel Klatt, when Texas A&M has the ball? Well, when you're trying to break in a new quarterback and there's some indecision at that position, the best friend of that quarterback is going to be a great run game. Travion Williams and Keith Ford, a really great duo for Nick Starkle, who's going to run out there for his first start as a quarterback. And then for UCLA, Jaleel Wadu. He's the smallest player on the field, but this guy is a spark plug of the defense. Excellent in coverage, and he's going to draw the matchup most of the day following around Christian Kirk. He's on the Thorpe Award watch list. Wadu. I don't mention all Pac-12 last year. First and 10. For Texas A&M at their own 25-yard line. And they run it. Travion Williams over the left side. And he's stopped by Matt Dickerson. But it's a gain of four. Starkle. Tell me about it. Well, Starkle's got a good, strong arm. He's big, 6'3", 215 pounds, has some athleticism about him. But what they love about him, he can get the ball down the field with good accuracy. Second down at six of the 29. 
And they'll run it straight ahead as Williams trying to pick his way up the field. Boss Tagaloa, first man to it. And this is when you find out a lot about your quarterback. There is no way to replicate a live game situation, in particular on a third down. First start on the road, Nick Starkle. His opportunity is right now. Third and five at the 30. Starkle, low snap. He handles it. Drops it off. Underneath. Caught Christian Kirk. And he'll pick up the first down. The junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. Dragged down from behind by Adarius Pickett. I love what they're doing here. Kirk is in motion. He's coming and he's going to let everything clear out. And then bang, he hits it and he's heading to the inside. That's an easy throw for the quarterback. They get it to their best player for the conversion. Gain of 13. First down and 10 at the 43. And it's Williams. Travion Williams. First true freshman for AM to rush for more than 1,000 yards in the season. He ran for 1,067. I think the three most important players on the field for Texas A&M are going to be Ford, Williams, and Kirk. Can they help out their young quarterback, Nick Starker? Second down and eight at the 45. Starker underneath, and he's got Kirk once again. Christian Kirk, a preseason All-American as a receiver and a putt returner. Got to love the play calls from offensive coordinator Noel Mazzoni. In breaking routes early, easy throws for Starkle. He's able to complete them, and guess who's catching the ball? Number three, Christian Kirk. And Coach Mazzoni and Coach is a very familiar coach around these UCLA. Oh, you better believe it. Quarters. First and ten at the 33. And Williams again. Coach Mazzoni got to College Station via Westwood as the coordinator of UCLA. He's Worked really all over the country, but he had tremendous success here at UCLA between 2012, 2015. A guy named Brett Hundley is his quarterback, but still very good friends with Jim Mora. Just not this week. No texting for those two this week. Tech play of the drive. It started at the Texas A&M 25. Second and eight. They run left, and the break back, Keith Four picks up the first down and more. The senior from Cypress, Texas, gains 11. Yeah, what I love here about this run is that he finds the hole. He wants to go left, and then there's the vision for that cutback, and he finds green grass and lowers his shoulder for a nice first down. First and 10 at the UCLA 20 for the Aggies on their opening series. Ford again, bounces it outside. Nice move, keeps his feet turning and goes out of bounds. And there to usher him out of bounds, Josh Woods, but a flag on the play. I think they're going to get a late hit. After the play was over, personal foul. Number one defense, late hit out of bounds. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. That's Darnay Holmes. He's a true freshman corner getting a start. And you see he just lunges right there at the end. Clearly out of bounds. Makes contact, shoves him again. And that's going to get called every time. Jim Mora was wondering how his young players would react to this stage. And early, Darnay Holmes showed a little bit of nerves. Now first down and goal at the five-yard line for a and Can they punch it in for six is the question. Ford in the backfield. They give it to him straight ahead. Ford, touchdown, Aggies. transfer watch other than the right tackle he gets all the way up to the linebacker that's the key block and then you could drive a truck through the hole and Ford finds himself into the end zone Daniel the camera in to attempt the extra point and it's good Aggies start on their own 25 marching all the way down the field Keith Ford paying it off Texas A&M on top of UCLA, 7-3 here in the first. And that run game for AM was awful stout on that first series. Braden Mann sends it away. Darnay Holmes is the deep man. And he'll get a shot, starting from his own two. Gets outside. And goes down to the 25. Third down and 11. At the 24. Bruins need to go to the 35 for first down. Rosen. 
Dances out of the pocket and hit as he throws. Incomplete. Or is that one picked up? Jared Johnson with the sack. And Texas A&M has it inside the UCLA five. Armani Watts scooped it up and almost got into the end zone. This is going to be very close. As Rosen is rolling to his right, Jared Johnson's going to beat Colton Miller to the left tackle. And Rosen tries to set up and throw. And that ball, that is going to be awful close. Now, I thought Johnson has made contact before that hand was starting to come forward. I'll be shocked if they don't look at this. And a &M with a golden opportunity here. They'll start first and goal at the Bruins three. Starker lobs it in the corner and incomplete. Ball intended for Rodgers. Kevin Sumlin knows that one was thrown a little high for Kendrick Rodgers. Yeah, in particular because... Rodgers has such a height advantage. He's 6'3". He was working against Darnay Holmes, the true freshman. Holmes is only 5'10". So at that point, you just got to put the ball right back at the back pylon let your tall wide receiver go and get it. Keith Ford scored the last time he touched the ball. Second and goal of the three. Ford, no. In the corner. And incomplete. This time, Christian Kirk, the intended receiver. Good defense by UCLA. Wadu. The spark plug. They have him listed at 5'9, 180 pounds. Coach Moore told us he might be 170 pounds soaking wet. And this is a huge opportunity here for UCLA. In sudden change situation, a chance to get off the field and force a kick. Third down goal at the three. Keith Ford lines up in the backfield. They give it to Ford around the left side, and he won't get in. Wonderful job of Darius Pickett denied him. Pickett had to avoid the block of the wide receiver who's going to come down and try to block him right here. And you're going to see our Darius Pickett. He's going to slip right past him. He spins, and then he is in perfect position to stop Ford at the two-yard line. So Daniel LaCamera will come on to attempt the 19-yard field goal. And it's good. Texas A&M takes a 10-3 lead on the road against UCLA. The defense forcing the turnover. And the Aggies look strong. 10 to 3, Texas A&M off to a great beginning with 5-11 to play in the first quarter against UCLA. Wade Mack kicks it off. Donnie Holmes is deep. And Holmes will start from his own goal line. Wood! Wood! Wood being laid on the field. Buddy Johnson! Oh my goodness. Welcome to college football, Darnay Holmes. So he's trying to cut back, and that is just a perfect tackle from Johnson. Rosen, 5 of 10, 30 yards, first down. At their own 15, all the run for me. And he coughed it up. Aggies may have it. And they do. Armani Watts with a wonderful chopping tackle, and Miles Jones fell on Back-to-back turnovers for UCLA. Well, that's the energy we're talking about. Armani Watts, he's their best player on the defensive side. He goes down low, that ball comes out clearly on the ground, and Texas A&M with a second straight turnover. There is not a better start that you could have written for Kevin Sumlin and this Aggies team so far today at the Rose Bowl against UCLA. They've done everything right so far. And Joel, the thing they've done the most, in my opinion, is this Aggies team has come out playing physical football. They are the more physical team right now on each line of scrimmage. I would expect a little heavy dose of running the football right here from Nolan Mazzone and the offensive coordinator. They bring in two backs, Keith Ford, Travion Williams. This is Travion Williams. And he'll get inside the 15. And 
That two back set when they've got both Ford and Williams in the backfield that's so difficult to defend because they generally send them in opposite directions and the linebackers for UCLA have to respect those two players. It creates seams and gaps for the defense. A six yard gain by Williams second and four. And they'll give it to him again. Look at him run spinning down to the two yard line. And Darius Pickett with the saving tackle. You see, here's the motion. You're going to send Ford one way and the other back the other way. And what it does is creates those big seams in the middle of the defense. And AM is taking advantage of that right now in the run game. Travion Williams. First and goal at the two. Williams with a walk in. Touchdown, AM. Just your shoulders off, young man. 16 to 3. Well, exactly like we expected. It was going to be sheer brute force by that offensive line running the football in for a touchdown. Williams right on that left side, and this is just straight speed to the pylon. And he gets it in for the touchdown. Extra point up. And good. No cute stuff that time for Kevin Sumlin's offense. They pounded it right down the throats of UCLA. So Mann sends it away. And the Bruins will start from the 10 yard line. But that special teams for Texas A&M so dominant to start this game. Not a lot of room. And they'll pitch it. Oh, run for me. Goes a shoulder and delivers a blow. What a blow delivered. Henderson with the tackle, but Bolu Ola run for me. Lowered his shoulder. Wow. Well, remember, Miles Jones is a true freshman. And Miles Jones, he's going to remember that one for a long time. A one yard gain, second and nine at the 37. And they run the reverse. Lasley spinning forward. And he dives to the 43-yard line. Armani Watts with the tackle. That's exactly what Jed Fish has done, Gus. He's trying to get the ball in the run game on the perimeter, trying to help Josh Rosen and help his offensive line protect what could be the best pure passer in all of college football. That takes us to the end of the first quarter. Seven. A&M with a 17-3 lead over UCLA, the SEC versus the Pac-12. As we start the second quarter, UCLA with 52 yards of offense in the first quarter. Two turnovers, a and had 114. Third down at four now at the 42-yard line for the Bruins. Josh Rosen looking to get on track. They need to protect him. Here's Rosen over the middle. And incomplete. That ball dropped by Jordan Lastly, and the Bruins will have to punt it away. Yeah, you know, I've been so impressed with number 10, Miles Jones for Texas A&M. He's 6'4", listed at only 177 pounds. He's a true freshman from Magnolia, Texas, and he has been really good so far today in coverage. Stefan Flintoff punting it away. Kirk clears, and that ball takes a UCLA bounce. It'll be down at the one-yard line. A 57-yard punt. At the one, Aggies running it. And they'll get some breathing room. Also the most impressive team in college football yesterday. I know who, I know who. The most impressive team in college to, football yesterday. Do you want me to say it or do you? Yeah, you could say it. You should say it. Howard. Howard University. Beating UNLV 45-point underdogs. Bring on Alabama. Here's four. <laughs> And he'll get to the 15. Well, I tell a nine-yard gain. This is just a clinic being put on by the offensive line for Texas A&M. So impressive. Starting at the one-yard line, snap the ball a couple of times, hand it off, and you're sitting at the 15. And, and they juggled that offensive line. We wanted to get the five best players out there, regardless of position. They've done that. 
Aggie staying on the ground with four. So Eric McCoy, at the beginning of the season, they had him at left guard. He played center all of last year, and they realized they needed to move him back to his normal spot. That's right. Colton Prater, who they toyed with at the center position, has earned a spot there at the left tackle spot. Ryan McCollum, the left guard, number 77. Their right side, Connor Lanafier and Keaton Sutherland, they've done a great job owning the line of scrimmage. Nick Starkle in his first start has not had to do anything all that impressive because the offensive line is owning. And in, continuing to dominate and watch Williams down the sideline. Can he get there? Williams finally knocked down inside the 10 by Nate Metters. Travion Williams with a 72-yard run. You've got to love what you got going on here. You're going to get this and then the pull around from the right tackle. Sutherland is going to get the key block, but that left side did a great job of sealing the linebackers and then Williams with his speed on the edge. This is so far a devastating rushing attack for the Aggies. Remember, as a true freshman, he ran for over 1,000. He's got 119 yards rushing in the first half already along with that big 72-yard run. And UCLA does not have an answer right now, and it really doesn't matter whether it's Williams or Ford. One thing I like about this Aggies team, Joe, they're playing with a sense of urgency. Yes, and a physicality. This is still a physical game played by physical men. Second down and goal at the six. Keith Ford back in. He's already scored a touchdown. They fire it underneath. Caught at the two-yard line by Osmond. Boy, even here on a third down, there is no reason to do anything other than hand the ball off. If for nothing else, the O-line has earned it. They have earned the right to try to punch this in right now in the run game be shocked if they weren't able to do so they've been that dominant thus far third and goal at the two Ford remains in they give it to him can he get in yes he can touchdown Aggies smash mouth football that's what they call it in Texas Joel Clatt and that's what we're seeing Here's what you're going to get is the double team from the left side of the offensive line. Just an outstanding job by McCollum and Prater. And that double team is going to move the line of scrimmage enough that even if the linebacker who was there, his name Kenny Young, 42, he's already with his back against the goal line. And then the running back wins the mano a mano, and it's a touchdown for the Aggies. The camera in for the extra point. And it's good. The Aggies started that drive on the one. They go 99 yards, getting the big 72-yard run from Travion Williams. Texas A&M smacking around UCLA. And we would have let it stand. They confirmed it. So UCLA starting from the goal line. Texas A&M has been great on special teams. And this time, the Bruins, Darnay Holmes, Picks up some positive yardage. First down and 10 at the 23, and they're running it over the right side. The Blandino will be with us next week. USC and Stanford. Guys, thanks for joining us. We'll see you later. We'll let you get over to the booth, and you will be with us for the rest of the game. Thank you. Uh, this defense for Texas A&M, they're taking a page out of their offense's book, which is owning the line of scrimmage. And this defensive line has played really well. And that front seven has been very active not allowing UCLA to get any traction in their run game. Second down and nine to the 24. Another run for me. The deep man out of the offset eye. Play fake. Rosen. Incomplete. Pabico, the intended receiver, just no rhythm offensively for the Bruins. Yeah, and they're right now in desperate need of help for Rosen on the offensive line, and they need a playmaker on the outside. Even when Rosen has had time, which he did on the last snap. No one's been able to get any separation in the secondary and get themselves open to a point where Rosen can hit them down the field. Bruins averaging 2.4 yards per play. Third down and nine at the 24. Rosen out of the shotgun. 
Steps up in the pocket. Decides to run it. He's got to get down. He gets out of bounds at the 30. As Alaka knocks him out of play. Again, nowhere to go with the football. No separation from the wide receivers for UCLA. And AM is just dominating this game right now. This secondary for AM really a strength for this team. They're blanketing these wide receivers. Nowhere to go. Flintoff kicks it away. Kirk allows it to go out of bounds. And Texas AM will start at their own 35. Hot start for AM. They'll have the football right after this. Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, California. 24 3. Kellen Mond remains in the game. A five star recruit. Was the number three dual threat quarterback in the class of 2017 out of IMG Academy in Florida. In 10 games at IMG, 200 and, uh, 2,700 yards passing, 20 passing touchdowns, and just three interceptions. As he hands it off to Williams. Travion Williams has been brilliant here in the first half. Pickett with the tackle, over 100 yards rushing. Yeah, and with a, with a nice assist from that old line, you know, who's, who's also been brilliant. 127 yards total for Williams. And allow Mond takes the handoff and gets it over the line of scrimmage. According to Coach Sumlin, his upside is limitless. His legs definitely come into play more than our other quarterbacks, but he's still a young guy. Well, he had the first third down throw that he had an opportunity to try to get him in a one-on-one -on -one situation and throw it to his left. Now another third down, but this very well could be a run play trying to utilize his legs. Third down and four at midfield. Forward in the game at running back. They give it to Mike. Picks up the first down and more as he's dragged down at the 34-yard line. A 16-yard gain by Pickett on the tackle. I love what they're doing because his eyes are just going to be all over the defensive end. And as Ford goes to the left, the defensive end gets blocked and there's nothing but green grass. Nice, easy play call for a true freshman. And he's able to run for the first down. He tucks it, looking, still running. Mond! First down inside the UCLA 20-yard line. That's a 14-yard gain on third and nine. Wadu with the ankle tackle. Just a complete design run for the quarterback. It was a token fake to the running back because the line actually folded on itself, kind of pulled a tackle around to create the hole for Mon. First down, four. This offensive line has been so good today, regardless of quarterback, regardless of back in the backfield, whether it's been Travion Williams or Keith Ford, they have had big holes to run through thanks to those five big fellas up front. Gain of five in the last place, second and five at the 14. And they'll run it straight ahead again and pick up a first down for Keith Ford. Not a lot of secret, tricky stuff going on with Texas A&M. No, nope, and that's what's demoralizing this game. The game of football is a game of wills. You are trying to break the will of your opponent. And when they know you're going to run, and you know you're going to run, and you're still successful, that's the start of breaking the will of the opponent. First down and goal of the nine. Travion Williams comes back in. Mon runs it. And he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Rick Wade, the redshirt sophomore from Santa Margarita, with the tackle. Lanfear, helmet came off. He'll have to sit out for at least one play. So his replacement is Jared Hawker, number 73. He's also a true freshman. So many young faces for Texas A&M. They had 29 new faces this year. Coach Sumlin told us this is a totally brand new team. 219 yards rushing for Texas A&M in the first half. Kevin Mond has come in for Nick Starkle. And he's been impressive. Sprints out of the pocket. Throws. Has a receiver. Kirk can't get in. Christian Kirk. 
Almost getting into the end zone for a touchdown. I love that play call because you get the true freshman quarterback on the move to his right. You're trying to get the ball to your best playmaker. Just wasn't able to get in. That was good coverage there from Darnay Holmes. In coverage from his corner spot. Able to force him out of bounds here at the one-yard line. Third down goal at the one. Ford in the game at running back. Ford. Submarine. Touchdown, Aggies. Third touchdown of the day for Keith Ford. Every time you hand the football off inside the five-yard line, there's going to be an unblocked defender. The running back knows it, and at this point, it's just man-to-man -man who can win at the goal line, and Ford has done it a few times today over the linebacker, number 42, Kenny Young. The camera, extra point, good. 31-3, Texas A&M. Great man, strong leg, sophomore. Holmes from the five. Gets to the 30. All the way up to the 34. Well, a run for me. The single setback. And he'll give it to him. And he crosses the 35 up to the 37. Olaka again with the tackle on defense for AM. Yeah, if they're going to have any chance in this game, they've got to create something, whether it's a schematic edge or a physical edge in this series here before the half. They're going to have to find something in their offense, whether it's a run game or throwing the ball down the field. Eight of four in the last play. They'll run to me again. And he'll pick up a first down. Jones with the tackle. Getting some push out of their offensive line. Finally moving the chains. It's their first first down since that first series that you were talking about. First and 10 of the 44 play fake. Rose it. Throws the deep ball. Down the field. He's got a receiver. Oh, Inside the five. Jordan Lasley. Rose it. Put that one up and on the money. A couple of flags out. This is going to be pass interference. Pass interference. Number 14 of the defense. Penalties declined. The result of the play is a first down. It's exactly what they're able to do is find some sort of success. It started with the run game. They get the first down, and then a big, heavy play action bang from Josh Rosen, and he's able to get the ball down behind the defense, and lastly comes down with it. A 54-yard reception. First and goal at the two-yard line for UCLA. Jalen Starks comes in at running back, along with Ola Runfamy. They hand it to the up man, Starks pushing forward. Touchdown, Bruins. Well, they needed that answer like they needed air to breathe in this game. Pushed by the offensive line, turning around, just giving it to the big fullback, Jalen Starks. He runs 265 pounds, a sophomore from Van Nuys. He's the short yardage back, and you can see why. Powerful, getting into the end zone. Molson in for the extra point. And it's good. 31 to 10, three minutes to go. Second quarter. Rosen showing that golden arm. As he puts that ball right in the hands of Lasta. Kirk from the one. Kirk at the 30. Still on his feet. And finally roughed up and taken down at the 39. First down at the 39 to the Aggies. Williams, over 100 yards rushing. Williams again. High stepping. Big time player. 61 big ones. Touchdown, Texas AM. Travion Williams. 
15 carries, 188 yards and two touchdowns. And he's got a scepter he's feeling that good about himself. Hey, what are you doing? What a run. What a run. Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator, is just dicing this defense up with this two-back set for Texas A&M. Dejection. Coming into this season, according to reports, Jim Moore under pressure. Four and eight last year, two and seven in the conference. 38 to 10, the score at halftime. Texas A&M 342 total yards. UCLA 151. After a commercial break, we'll send you to Mike Hill, the sergeant in the studio. And we'll go back to the legendary Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, California. And that score is the score, folks. 38 to 10. Texas A&M leading UCLA as we head into the second half. Gus Johnson, along with my partner Joel Klatt, whoa, <laughs> Texas A&M. Yes. Played with an urgency, yep. a physicality, yep. and with precision yep. in that first half. You know, and, and for me, it boiled down to two things. The offensive line for Texas A&M was winning the line of scrimmage, and the defensive line was putting pressure on Josh Rosen. It's been a completely dominant half by the Texas A&M Aggies. As we take a look at the Geico first half stats, look at that, 286 rushing yards to 37 for UCLA. That's all you need to know out of this game so far. The Aggies with the football to start the second half. And this is Kirk bringing it out of the end zone. With a lane, and he'll dive forward and get to the 25. And let's go downstairs and check in with Jenny. Gus, thanks. Well, as you can imagine, Coach Sumlin very pleased with the running backs. He said, I expect that from them, and his quarterbacks have managed the game well. But the big story on the other side of things, before the break, Josh Rosen clearly frustrated, walked off with a little bit of a limp. He slammed his helmet before he was leaving. I asked Coach Moore about it. He said his ankle is fine. And Coach Moore said, this is a teaching moment for us. How can we climb out of this one? We've been playing too tentative. I'm worried about how they finish this game, this second half. It's new for us. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. So Texas A&M brings Nick Starkle back onto the field. Second, first and ten. Ford outside. Turns it up, lowers his shoulder and gets seven. Maybe eight on the play. Nate Metters with the tackle. This is when you got to let that offensive line eat a little bit. Boy, this line has been so good. Ford a bit hobbled. He'll come out of the game. Nick Starkle out of the gun. Kendall Bussey enters for the first time at running back for AM. Play fake. Underneath, caught. Kirk turns it up. Gets to the sideline. Lays his shoulder and goes down. And Gary is bigger with a tackle after a 14 yard gain. What a move from Kirk after he caught the football. Understanding that it was man coverage, he had one player to beat, and he spun out of that tackle right away. Gets the first down and lets him know it. Four catches, 46 yards for Christian Kirk. I think one of the most underrated attributes that a wide receiver can have is awareness of where that defender is trying to come up and make the tackle from. Kirk clearly had it and spun the opposite direction to get clean and free for the first down. At the 16. Bussy. about that awareness as a wide receiver you have to understand that the defenders always going to try to up and tackle your outside or closest to the sideline Kirk immediately spins the opposite direction and gets the first down that's because defensive coaches always teach those defensive backs keep your outside arm free and try to make the tackle towards the inside where the pursuit of your defense is coming second and five play fake that one deflected and incomplete UCLA getting pressure, Phillips, and this ball picked up. And incomplete pass is the call. 
finally getting a little bit of pressure. They're coming with the pressure, and Jalen Phillips, a really good-looking true freshman, long, athletic. He's 6'5", 255 pounds, NFL size and speed, getting stronger as a youngster. But he's able to come in and bat that ball down. They are very high on Jalen Phillips. They think he can be one of the next great front seven players for UCLA. Of course, they've had a few. Anthony Barr, Miles Jack, and they think that he's maybe next in line. From Redlands, California, third down and six at the UCLA 12 for the Aggies. Travion Williams back in the game. Starkle with protection now decides to run it. And it'll be dropped down from behind. UCLA doing a great job. This time it's Tuioti coming up with the stop. Love the effort from Tuioti Mariner, senior from Corona. Had to spin out and Starkle slow to get up. You know, Tuioti, he came and kind of rolled up on the back of his feet as they slid towards the sideline. Let's hope Starkle is going to be okay. The camera in to attempt a 32 yard field goal. And good. 9.57 to play, third quarter. AM 41, UCLA 10. And here is the Jeep stat comparison. Starkle flipping off the field on the last play. Uh, both quarterbacks that we've seen today have had a little bit of success. Mon more the runner, so he's had the success rushing the football. Starkle has been effective, but he hasn't really needed to be effective because of the effectiveness of their run game. As they Starkle him on the sideline. I was just going to say th these two guys. I mean this this program you can clearly see with all the true freshmen playing these young quarterbacks. They, they've got real potential here. Maybe this year the way they're playing and certainly in the years to come. Holmes from his five yard line looking to get outside and he's out of bounds at the 15. First and 10 <laughs> at the 17. Jamabo. There's just nowhere to run inside the tackles. You know, the only success they've had is on the outside. This offensive line has been dominated by the front seven of Texas A&M. A year ago, the story for UCLA was their absolute inability to run the ball. They were 127th in the country running the ball, averaging 84 yards per game, or even worse than that today. Second and nine of the 18. And it's Jamaba again. Pushed out of bounds by Dotson. You get the feeling when you watch this Texas A&M team, and, and you know this because you went through it when you were a quarterback at Colorado. The players understand what their coach is going through, and you can tell that they're out there really balling for them today. You used a term earlier in the game that I think is absolutely perfect. They're playing with a sense of urgency in every facet of the game. And you could say, hey, maybe that's for Kevin Sumlin, maybe that's for themselves. Whatever it is, they're playing with that sense of urgency today. They're down to three. Rosen sprinting out of the pocket. And knocked out, incomplete. Another well-defended play. Lasley, the intended receiver. And I tell you what, we've been mentioning Armani Watts' name all day. He's a senior. The beginning of the game, I said that this guy is their best defensive player. He has not disappointed. They have been so good in the secondary. You're going to see him flying in, laying out right in front of Lasley, knocking it down. Christian Kirk, the deep man. He will have the ball at the 27 yard line on the fair catch. 8.32 to play, third quarter. We'll take a quick break. AM with the lead and the football right after this. He'll dump it down to Rodgers. And that's an incomplete pass. So many young players have played for this AM team. You know, that's another component to maybe some of those poor finishes is just mentality, leadership. Well, they got a lot of new faces for Texas AM. We've seen a lot of them today. A couple in big spots for Kevin Sumlin, Jamon Osmond, their wide receiver, Kellen Mond in there. 
at the quarterback position. They've had Jared Hawker, an offensive lineman, a true freshman play at some points in this ball game. So that mentality is also changing for someone in the Aggies. Second and 10 of the 41. Bussy in the game at running back. And they give it to him. Big opening. Bussy dives forward, and he's close to a first. As Darius Pickett makes the tackle, don't forget back in 2013, Coach Sumlin was awarded a six-year, $30 million contract. Yeah, and they also, it, you know, it wasn't just their investment into the coaching staff, which they clearly made. But remember, they totally rebuilt and revamped Kyle Field and made it one of the premier venues in all of college football. And so there had, there, there's there been a significant investment into this program, and they're wanting to see some of the returns on that investment. On to throw it. And has received it. Not holding on to the ball. That's Jones. I would say there's only one area of the team that we haven't really seen how good they are or they aren't at this point for Texas A&M because they just haven't had to throw the ball. There hasn't been any pressure on their passing game at any point during the course of the day. So maybe that question goes a little bit unanswered today for Texas A&M, but surely in every other facet, they've answered with a resounding solidness that is pretty impressive. Williams. Williams gets across the 30-yard line. Looking at Kellen Mond, and I know this may be a bit much because he's still a young kid. But for some reason, he reminds me of the kid at Texas Tech last year that went to Kansas City in the first round. Mahomes, in terms of his elusiveness, I know we haven't really seen him throw the ball like we saw Pat last year. And Patrick had such a talented arm. You know, it's, it's difficult to know because, again, we just haven't seen the pressure on the passing game, him having to throw the ball down the field. But I, I see what you mean in the way that he moves. Right. Finds space. Can slide. Yeah. It's third down and six. And incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down. Did you expect Mahomes to get drafted as high as he did? I think he was the 10th overall pick. You know, not, not until we started getting closer to the draft. And what happened with Patrick Mahomes was that every coach in the NFL that ever coached Brett Favre saw Favre in Patrick Mahomes. And so it's not a surprise that Andy Reid went way up there to grab him. But that was that was kind of a comparison amongst those coaches. So La Camera in to attempt a 48-yarder. And he just stepped up and drilled it. All sides of the ball playing well for Texas A&M. Offense, defense, special teams. 44 to 10 is our score. Back to Pasadena right after this. 44 to 10, Texas A&M leading UCLA, the season opener for both of these teams. They played in College Station last year. Close game with A&M winning in overtime. Different story today. Man will send it away. Darnay Holmes is the deep man. And he did not return this. The Aggies have won 20 straight non-conference games in the regular season, the second longest streak in the nation to Alabama. And this ball caught by Wilson. He turns it up and gets to midfield before being taken down by Watts. I love watching Caleb Wilson have success in college football. I played for his father, who was at Colorado as a defensive line coach. So I knew Caleb when he was just a little boy, running around on the field, catching the ball. He's always had those great hands. Rosen looking long. Lastly, the intended receiver. Yeah, and certainly there are players that fall through the gaps, and, and that's the unfortunate side of football. And, and I wish that universities could identify those kids sooner and programs identify those kids sooner so that they can help them through uh, their issues in college. But I, I will say the inconvenient truth is that conflicts do arise between intercollegiate athletics and academics. And if you're a scholarship athlete, male or female, Generally, you have to lean towards your scholarship sport. And people didn't want to hear that, but he was right. Second down and 10, over the middle, and this one caught as they go up high. Theo Howard with the reception, and he gained 16. Unfortunately for Josh, is the general perception and then reaction to those comments were really misleading. They were lazy, misguided. 
and he took the backlash, but rest assured, his teammates loved him. Josh over the middle, caught, and this is Wilson again, close to the five-yard line. I mean, this is a big-time throw right here from Rosen. This is the type of throw that scouts are going to drool off of because he moves the defense with that pump fake and then, bang, right on the frame of the tight end. That's a big-time throw. First down and goal at the seventh. They run it with Jamaica on touchdown Bruins. One thing you can say about Josh Rosen, not only is he a talented athlete, his teammates love it. They played like it on that series. Great series. The O-line stepped up, started protecting Rosen, giving him some space, and the wide receivers began to create space in the back end, in particular Caleb Wilson, the sophomore from Dallas. Molson in for the extra point, and it's good. UCLA refusing to quit. 2.06 to go in the third, 44-17. Jim Moore talked to him yesterday at their team hotel, asked him if he was feeling any kind of pressure. He said, not a bit. I've been doing this for a long time, and I don't pay attention to what you media guys have to say. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't you love it when they say that? You media guys. That's right. Why do they always say it with that vitriol in their voice? What's up with that? Mond remains in a quarterback. Here's the handoff. Williams. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. Well, you mentioned that quarterback Nick Starkle left with an injury. It appears that he has now left the building. He was on a card. He needed assistance to walk, and he was limping. He had been evaluated for his legs on the field, guys, and that is the latest with Starkle. Okay, thank you very much, Jen. So, Coach Sumlin told us that he could possibly play three quarterbacks in this game. He's played two, so Jake Hubenek still has an opportunity to play. Here's Jake, Jr. from Georgetown, Texas. Second and nine at the 26. And they hand it off to Williams. Travion. Williams, 20 carries, 201 yards rushing today. For AM, that ball broken up as Wadu steps in the lane and knocks it down. Yeah, he's played hard tonight, and he's had a tough responsibility, generally following Christian Kirk around and Jaleel Wadu senior from right here in LA Thorpe Award watch list starting a safety for three years and he's playing like it. he's had a good game tonight while his teammates have potentially struggled around him Shane Trebuca comes in to punt for the fourth time Damian Alloway the deep man for UCLA and that ball will take a bounce and die at the 15. First down at the 15. Rosen. Underneath. And it's caught by Wilson. He gains six and a half, maybe seven. Watts with the tackle. That's exactly what happened. Watts there shadowing on that side of the field. But like he has this entire half, Caleb Wilson's been the only Bruin that can create space and allow Rosen an opportunity to get a completion down the field. down Jamabo will not get it they ambush him from behind as Wilson makes the tackle and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter heading to the fourth Texas A&M with a huge lead and A&M fans sawing the horn here in Pasadena for the Aggie fans. They got to see what happened down in Austin a day ago, and then they came here. <laughs> they have been impressive here with a quarter to go. That's right, Maryland beating Texas in Austin. Third and two at the 23. Rosen underneath, and it's a first down UCLA. Caleb Wilson continues to find openings. He's already close to that 10 catch mark. Close to 100 yards, working on Armani Watts. That's a great matchup there in the middle of the field. First down to the 28. Play fake, Rosen over the middle. 
Caleb Wilson again. And Caleb goes out of bounds at the 48 yard line after a 20 yard gain. Larry Pryor knocks him out of bounds. How about Caleb Wilson? Nine catches, 120 yards today. His death, Chris, two time All American at Oklahoma. Defensive line coach in the NFL right now for the Eagles and making Dad proud. Rosen, pump fake. Underneath Wilson again. Caleb Wilson having his way with the Aggie defense now. Here's what I love about a guy that understands football is he understands leverage. Watch him, he's going to give an outside move and then get to the inside of Armani Watts. See that little juke move? And that's how you create space in the back end. Love what Caleb Wilson is doing right now. Back to back big gains of 20 and 25 yards. First down. Bruins at the Texas AM 28. Rosen steps up in the pocket, delivers underneath. Has another wide open receiver, Lastly, And he'll spin down inside the 10. A gain of 19. Good protection for Rosen there. Able to step up in the pocket. Allow that crossing route to get all the way across the field to the opposite hash. Then he finds Lasley for another first down. Makes it first down and goal at the nine yard line. Jamago in the game and running back. Rosen will throw it. Hit as he throws incomplete. That time intended for Theo Howard. That is an amazing move again by Johnson. Watch Johnson's going to go upfield and then get back inside with a spin move and just hammer Josh Rosen. Jared Johnson, the senior from Katy, Texas, has just done a number on Colton Miller, the left tackle today. Second down goal at the nine. High formation. Jamabo, the deep man. The hitch, near side. Andrews, touchdown. UCLA. Motion out of the backfield, and he gets a beneficial matchup right there. And making people miss in space, he makes Howard miss and dances into the end zone. That's too easy there on the outside. Nice drive again for UCLA and Josh Rosen. JJ Bolson, extra point is good. So we've got a 20 point game. 13 22 to play in the fourth quarter. Stranger things have happened. 44 to 24. UCLA scoring quickly. 75 yards they go in two minutes and two seconds, then 85 yards in two minutes and four seconds to cut a 34-point deficit to 20. Well, now you're looking at just a three-possession game, and that's a lot of time left for just three possessions. Remember, Texas A&M now going with a true freshman quarterback. Can UCLA make him make mistakes? Kirk brings it out of the end zone. And knocked out of play as he crosses the 25. Mond out of the shotgun. Mond will throw it under pressure. Uses his legs and picks up a first down. A 15-yard gain on third and nine. Well, UCLA had the correct defense called. They're actually going to spy Kellen Mond because he's so good with his legs. But look at this. He makes the move, and the tackle is not made in space, and he moves the chains. Eight carries, 49 yards for the freshman. First down. Mond to throw it. Your side. Oh, it's caught by Osmond. And he'll gain five. Good series, though. The conversion on third down. Mon keeps the series going. And now the offensive line starts to wear on him a little bit and a completion on the outside. They're finding their rhythm here at Texas A&M with a true freshman. He's done a real nice job in this series. Mon getting valuable experience. Week one. Play fix. Pulls it down. Scrambles. Has to get rid of it. Will not. And he'll take a sack. Phillips again making a play, and that's a 10-yard loss. 
Well, he's going to try to get that ball out to the right side. UCLA did a nice job of staying put. He's got a player deep that's open. The problem was is he had to be running so hard to his right, he couldn't get anything on the ball to get it down deep. I think Mon needed to throw that ball away. That's your true freshman mistake. He's outside of the pocket, throw it away, and it's a more manageable third down. So that's the growing pains that you're going through with a young quarterback in here for the Aggies. So it's third and 15. Golden opportunity for UCLA to get the ball back. They hand it off. Ford around the corner. He's chopped down. And the Aggies will be forced to punt. Jaleel Wadu. Well, the defense gets helped out there by the decision not to throw it away, but then they get themselves off the field. And now you're looking at getting the ball back if you're UCLA. Some, somewhere around that nine minutes and 20 seconds, nine minutes and a half. That's a lot of time. I know it's three possessions. That's three scores. But the defense doing their job, getting the ball back for their quarterback. Back deep, Damian Alloway. Trebuca will punt it away from the 35. Gets it away. Low kick. Out of the way. And it takes a bounce and just dies inside the five. He put some English on that kick. Well done by Shane Trebuca. Josh Rosen and the UCLA offense will start inside their own five. 44 to 24. Texas A&M leading UCLA here in the fourth quarter, but the Bruins have the football. And they'll start from the four. Time is a factor here because of the three possession game, the three score game. As a quarterback, you got to create a zero moment. And at this point for Rosen, I think he's thinking about the seven minute mark or where they need to be scoring a touchdown at about the seven minute mark to make this a legitimate comeback opportunity. First and ten of the four yard line. Caleb Wilson has been spectacular. Rosen throws on the run and incomplete. Texas A&M with some pressure up the middle. Kingsley Kiki. The last with pressure. In the last two series we've seen Texas A&M sit back in zone coverage. And that's why the middle of the field has been open for a guy like Caleb Wilson. On that snap, they actually played a bit of man and tried to take that away from Wilson and Josh Rosen. That's why Rosen didn't have anywhere to go with the ball because the coverage and man coverage for Texas A&M has been excellent all night long. Second and ten. Rosen. Over the middle. tripped up at the last moment he could have broke that one for a touchdown a 28 yard game well at the top of your screen you're going to see a great route get executed i told you they were in man coverage so he sells going to the outside and then cuts back to the inside creating some space for the quarterback rosen hits him in stride first down at the 32 rosen pump fake underneath again and caleb wilson gains about nine and a half they're not going blazing fast right now, but you can tell there's a sense of urgency about their tempo back at the line of scrimmage. Rosen communicating the routes to his wide receivers and instructing his running back where to go. Second and one. Looking for the first down. Jamapo. And he has it plus up. Diving forward. Let's see where they spot it. Looks like a 17-yard gain as Pryor made the saving tackle again. Rosen, quick start, looking, over the middle, oh, touchdown Bruins, Darren Andrews, uh-oh, and we have eight minutes and 12 seconds to play, 96 yards, right down the field Rosen makes a huge mistake that is right in the hands of Deshaun Caper Smith and it goes right there Andrews was surprised that the ball even hit him in the chest huge mistake AM can't convert extra point good Bruins go 96 yards in a minute and six seconds 8-12 to play don't go anywhere folks it's going down 
the Bruins send it away, and it will go into the end zone for a touchback. At one point, the score of this game was 44 to 10. With 4.08 to go in the third quarter, UCLA has scored three touchdowns. First down at the 40 yard line. Mon. And he throws a missile to Kirk. Christian Kirk with a gain of 15. Now, there you go. You talk about that's the first big time throw of his college career. In the pocket, needs to complete it, and he throws a corner route on the money. Mon to throw it. Mon standing strong in the pocket. Incomplete. Kirk had a step. UCLA trying to double team Christian Kirk. You have to do it because he's so dangerous. And boy, that was just outside of the reach. It was a pretty good throw. I mean, within inches of being a completion down inside the 10 yard line. I really, I mean, Mon's a great athlete and he can run it. I know he's a dual threat guy, but this guy can throw it now. He's got a great motion. He's got some velocity down the field. I love him with the way he sets up in the pocket. He's confident. Kevin Sumlin has got himself something here in this true freshman quarterback. Second and ten. Play fit. Mon breaks contain. Turns a corner. Down the side. Tiptoe through the tulips. Mon, did he stay in? No, he didn't. Out of bounds at the 21. Or make it the 22. Oh, he almost kept himself in bounds. More importantly, gets the first down, moves the chains, and that was awful close over there on the sideline. This guy is electric on the outside. And that left foot just came down out of bounds. Right there. Boy, the electricity when he hits the edge. He has got some serious giddy up. 10 carries, 50 yards. First down. Mon running it again. Spinning. And this is such a career building oh, yeah. drive yeah. for Kellen Mon, the young freshman from San Antonio, Texas. These reps are invaluable right now. You have no idea how severe the injury is to Nick Starkle and now Mond in this big scenario as UCLA is mounting a comeback comes on the field and has orchestrated a brilliant drive for the Aggies second down to three at the 15 and they run it Williams and he just gets back to the line of scrimmage May have lost the yard. Rick Wade with the tackle you know with with his ability to run here on third down the clock moving. I would be shocked if they're not going to put the ball in his hands in some zone read capacity. Not with a pass option on it, because you don't want to stop the clock artificially for UCLA. You've got Trevon Williams in the backfield. Allow Mon to make the play with his feet. Third down and fourth to 16. Mon. In trouble. And taken down. What a play. Keyshawn Lucier South. Well, you certainly don't want to take a sack in this situation. Lucier South just totally unblocked. Missed assignment up front. Travion Williams, I think he made a mistake. He's supposed to block the edge, the running back. He leaves him free. And Mon did a nice job of at least not turning the ball over. You hate to take a sack when you're in field goal range. But he led UCLA to that big win. And this one, short. New Heisel led UCLA to the big win at Texas. Now Josh Rosen trying to lead UCLA back against Texas A&M. The camera short. Bruins with life. 44 to 31, our score. UCLA down, but with the football right now. And they actually blocked this. Adarius Pickett, number six, who had that terrible penalty to start the drive, gets in and just gets a piece of that ball. He sticks out that left paw and his left thumb 
is what started to get that ball to knuckle, causing the missed field goal. First down at the 26 for the Bruins. Rosen underneath. Wilson again. Caleb Wilson. This will be full two-minute type tempo at the line of scrimmage as fast as they can. Rosen again off his back foot and incomplete. Looking for Wilson. Right there, though, it's Dots in the middle linebacker. And that time, Texas A&M actually brought a blitz for the first time in the last couple of series. Trying to disrupt the timing of Rosen, it clearly worked. He threw that ball well before he wanted to in the direction of Caleb Wilson. Third down, three at the 33. Obviously, four down territory, if need be, for the Bruins. Throws it over the middle, nobody home. So now that brings up fourth down with 4.17 to go in the fourth. Well, Wilson has been the guy all night long. 12 catches, 160 yards. The big tight end for UCLA. First UCLA tight end with 10 plus catches since Mercedes Lewis in 2005. Fourth and three. Rosen, pumping, caught, Wilson again, gets out of bounds at the Texas A&M 40-yard line, and a flag is on the play as well. He may have got hit late. The Bruin bench just exploding with energy there as Wilson again. After the play was over, personal foul, number 11 defense, late hit out of bounds. 15 yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Larry Pryor with the late hit out of bounds. Here's Wilson working against Watts, and he again is going to give him that outside move. Watts has fallen for that a couple of times. Wilson gets space, and he's able to get in there and just a little bit too late. That was right on the edge right there. Might have looked worse than it was, but Pryor's called for the penalty nonetheless. Moving the ball further down the field. Rose it off first down. In trouble. Buying time. Turns a corner. It gets out of bounds at the 20. That's a smart play from Josh Rosen. There was a guy open in the back of the end zone, but it would have been a really tough throw. He took the free yardage right in front of him and got out of bounds. Look at a decision there from Rosen. Second down and six at the 22. Jamabo in the backfield with Rosen. Rosen under pressure slings it underneath and it's caught at the 10-yard line by Darren Andrews He went side on a la Matt Stafford. He had to there was a free rusher Texas A&M brought a blitz It was a free rusher in the face of Rosen, but he got him around for Josh Rosen under pressure throws in a long time. Rosen had guys all over him in the backfield. Molson for the extra point. Good. 3-10 to go. 44-38. Can UCLA get the ball back again? Rosen has to elude the first rusher and as he's trying to escape to his left, nonetheless, he just rears back and launches it into the end zone. Theo Howard, he comes back to the ball perfectly, and it's a touchdown for the Bruins. What an extraordinary effort from Rosen, even to get that ball anywhere close to the end zone. What an extraordinary comeback this has been. Texas A&M thoroughly dominated UCLA in every facet for two and a half quarters. And now a brilliant quarterback who's been given time to throw in the pocket has bring his team all the way back. And they do. Kirk and Bussy back. Here's Kirk 
Brings it out of his own end zone. Kurt, looking for a hole, crosses the 20 and gets up to the 24. He's got to milk the clock. Mond running it, looking. And Mond will gain about four yards on the play. As Octavius Spencer comes up and knocks him down. They give him three. Well, we're going to see exactly what Mond is made of here. UCLA calls a timeout. They have one remaining. AM with all three of their timeouts remaining. Second down, and they call it eight. At the 25. Mond underneath incomplete. Jaleel Wadu almost picked that football off. And AM is trying to go to their most trustworthy offensive weapon, Christian Kirk. But UCLA knows that that's going to be the plan. Two Bruins on Christian Kirk, double teaming him on the inside and outside. Biggest play of the game coming up right now. Third down and eight. UCLA's defense wants to get the ball back to Josh Rosen. Mon, can he make a play? Here's Mon. Steps up and sacked. Tuioti Mariner. And AM will have to punt it away with 2.45 to go. UCLA with one timeout left. Here he's going to come from the left defensive end spot. Jacob Tuioti Mariner. Great effort and the sandwich sack as UCLA gets off the field in a quick manner and is going to give the ball back to Josh Rosen. That defense has had a 180-degree turnaround from what they were at the beginning of the game. Trebuka punting from the six. Pickett with the fair catch at the 34. And here we go. 2.39 to go. Throws it in the shotgun. Under pressure, underneath, and it's complete. Andrews gets out of bounds. A gain of 11. Now, without a timeout, they've got to be cognizant of what they're doing with the football. So when the receivers get the ball, they've got to be looking for either a first down or to get themselves out of bounds. But with two and a half left at the 45, they're not going to be panicked about the clock just yet. No timeouts. Rosen looking left. Underneath it, incomplete. Theo Howard, closest man to the football. That stops the clock at 219. Rosen over the middle, caught again. This time it's Andrews. They've got to go fast here. He did not get the first down. The clock will be moving the entire time. They've got to get a play call, get up to the line of scrimmage, and try to execute to move the chains here on the third down. Third and one of the 46. Low snap picked up by Rosen. Underneath, first down, Wilson. Josh Rosen with the hands of Derek Jeter on that play. I mean, that ball was all the way down in his left foot. He goes down and gets it, then gets a good grip in order to throw a nice, accurate ball to Chris. First down to 10 of the 40, Rosen! Rosen again! A 16-yard gain! This kid's hands are unbelievable. Wilson snatches that ball out of the air. First down, Rosen! In trouble. Incomplete. Texas A&M blitzing. And he was so fortunate that that ball wasn't picked off. Alaka had it right there in his hands after it got batted down. Watch this. Dodson bats it down, and then Alaka, number 42, is going to have a shot at it as he's going to the ground. That could have ended the game right there. But well, fortunately, Michael Alves deflected it. Second and 10 at the 24. Bruins trail 44 to 10 in the third quarter. Second and 15. Rosen over the middle. Pat Andrews. 
They back him up behind the 15. But let's see if his forward progress will spot it closer to the 10. You know, the hard part there, Gus, was that he reestablished himself after coming back, got knocked back, reestablished himself. So that's why it's not a first down. Throws it. Sideline. Jordan Lasley unable to hold on as he takes his eyes off the football. Remember a year ago, it was a third down drop in overtime that doomed UCLA in their attempt to win in College Station. They're a third down drop, and the game comes down to a fourth down snap. Fourth down and six at the 20. Bruins need to go to the 14 for first down. Rosen. Looking, drops it off, caught, Jamaba, first down UCLA, and he gets out of bounds. With 48 seconds to go on the clock, stop it. What a great read from Rosen. No one from Texas A&M went with the swing out of the backfield, which was Jamabo, and he just dumps it off for a first down. Rosen fakes the spike in the end zone. point to give the Bruins the lead. to go out of the end zone. Four, first and 10 at the 25. Mond drops it off incomplete. Intended for Williams. Where do the Aggies have to go to get in field goal range? They've got to get, realistically, I understand what he did in high school, and, and realistically, you have to get this ball at least to the 38, 39, or 40 yard line. The camera earned national attention on Thanksgiving in 2014 when he kicked that 68-yard field goal. Mond in trouble. Throws incomplete. 33 seconds left. Jalen Phillips, the true freshman. He's their best pass rusher. This is when the best pass rusher has to be great. Shaking up on the last play, he'll leave the game. And m has all three of their timeouts remaining. Third down and 10 of the 25. If you're UCLA, you have to know where Christian Kirk is on the field. Top of your screen in the slot. Mon, play fake. Dancing, throws. Incomplete. And that brings up fourth down with 27 seconds to go. Fourth and 10 from the 25. The true freshman. 
wants to run it. Can he get there? Mon taken down, and it looks like he has the first down. It's going to be awfully close. He had to get to the 35. It looks like that ball is going to be spotted right on that 35-yard line. Hmm. After video review, the runner was only able to make advancement to the 34-yard line. Since the line of the game was a 35, the ball's turned over on downs. First down, UCLA. UCLA 20 seconds away from one of the most miraculous comebacks that you can ever see. Josh Rosen. Chosen. Rosen. What a performance. Rosen backs it up. They don't come after him. And now he takes it in. 12 seconds to go. And that's it. UCLA comes all the way back. Behind the brilliance of Josh Rosen. Let's go. They defeat Texas A&M. 45-44. Instant classic. And as our Bill Rafter would say about Josh Rosen, onions. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Josh, it is hard to describe what we just witnessed from you bringing this team back 34 points. How did you do it? I mean, at a certain point, you just got to play your offensive drives and not focus on anything else. You play the best football you can and hope that you come out on the better side in the end of it. It has been almost 11 months since you last played for this team and home at the Rose Bowl. You get the win in this fashion. What does it mean to you? It feels great. It's been a long offseason. It's been a long, long offseason. Um, a lot of thinking. Uh, a lot of uh, reflection, and um, hopefully this is just the first step to a long, long and uh, very successful season. Coach Mora told me at the break he wanted a response. How proud are you of your teammates and how they bonded in the second? I'm so proud of them. I mean, we're breaking in a new offense. You're going to have some bumps. Um, and in the first half, early in the first half, we just weren't getting, uh, getting off to the right foot. And um, I guess we just kind of needed a little spark in the second half, and that's what we got. And... And at a certain point, it started to get bleak. But we're playing against ourselves. We're on championship standard every single, uh, every single uh, day. And uh, we just wanted to go out and execute on offense. And then hope that it ended up well. All right. Well, you go enjoy this tonight. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. Gus? Humility. Josh Rosen. But what an ending. UCLA climbs the mountain behind this man, their leader, chosen. Josh Rosen coming up. We'll wrap it up from the Rose Bowl. Bruins on top of the Aggies. Wow.